Purusha. And uh, the characteristics are given to us uh, so that we treat them as our goal of life. And we try to actually just imitate them at this stage, you know, so um, because that is the goal. So our effort, our self-effort should be to reach um, that sort of behavior. Okay, that is what this is. Um, we have seen these characteristics in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, chapter 12, and 14. Um, they're very, very similar. Um, so Bhagavan is just, uh, he has this portion in here so that uh, we are aware. Uh, Guruji says that um, it is easier to understand Brahman, but more difficult to understand a Jivan Mukta Purusha. Because they behave in such different, different ways that you'd think, well, is this a Jivan Mukta Purusha or what? So that's what he says. Uh, my bookmark is on verse 440, um, right? 440 verse. Okay. So we are continuing. I'm not going to go back into all the characteristics. So we continue with these ones. Sajivan Mukta Lakshana is being repeated, the last quarter of the the last part of the second line. So this is a Jivan Mukta. Through knowledge, he who never distinguishes between the Jiva and Brahman and between the universe and Brahman is indicated as a Jivan Mukta. Uh, in Vedanta, we know that there are these three questions or a three-pronged question. First of all, who am I? Second of all, who, what is this world? And because I'm very sure that I have not created the world, who is the creator of the world? So Vedanta has to answer all these questions. Who am I? What is the world? And who has created it? And the answer has to come that there is no three things. There is only one thing, and that's Brahman, Ishwar. So here, what is what Bhagavan Shankaracharya is saying? Through knowledge, knowledge, self-realization. So through knowledge of that oneness between himself and Brahman, he has he has come to know once you recognize your oneness with the supreme reality you also at the same time come to know that you are the substratum of this universe so what is real is only the substratum and whatever is seen on top is an illusion and this is what he's saying the the one person who through knowledge knowledge realization of his his oneness with pure consciousness has come to know the relation, it says, the, who never distinguishes. Because why? Because he has come to know that there is only one. There cannot be any distinct, distinction. That's why. So through knowledge, he knows that I am the self in all because I am Brahman. And then if I am the self in all, then this world also is an, is a, is an illusion on me. Me? Not the physical me, but the substratum. So therefore, there is no distinction in his mind. He will see the distinctions, okay? Not that he suddenly, he can't see who is, this person is different, that person is different, or this thing or that thing. He sees it, but he does not give it the reality that we do. We give a lot of reality to things that are happening outside of us. So he never distinguishes means, not that he's, he becomes blind and he doesn't see, he will see it, but it will not affect, have, have, it will not have any effect on his behavior. So whether, a, you know, for us, a person comes, if he's our friend, we are all happy, happy. If, if it's somebody we don't like, then we, our behavior is different. That's what he is on. That is what is meant by, he who never distinguishes, he never distinguishes, means his behavior towards them is the same because he has come to know that this entire world is an illusion and I am the one that is supporting this entire world, entire universe. Okay. Sadhu bhi pujamane smin pidyamane pidurjanehi samabhavo bhavedyasya sajivan mukta lakshanaha. 
he who feels the same when his body is worshipped by the virtuous or tortured by the wicked is considered as a jivan mukta in chapter 12 we see the bhakta lakshana tulya ninda stutir mauni tulya tulya equal what ninda and stuti ninda criticism censure stuti praise a jivan mukta sometimes they describe as a statue you know we have statues of personalities right mahatma gandhi any great so the statue there once a year there will be garland garlanded and all puja everything and the rest of the year the birds are you know pooping on that thing but does the statue say anything no that is what's going on. that is what tul that's why when he when he is praised he says okay this is oh god so he becomes equal see what happens to us is we get very happy in praise and that's why when somebody criticizes us we we get angry both have to be avoided so for him it is tulya it's the same whether they have, because he knows that they whether it is praise or whether it is criticism it cannot be directed towards the pure consciousness who i am it is to my body or to my intellect or to my mind you know you are you are not very compassionate or your body is this or that or you are very dull so he knows that it is whatever praise is there is to the body mind intellect whatever criticism is there to the body mind intellect i am not the body mind and intellect so it doesn't matter to me that is what this is and this is this is the you know characteristic that jesus christ when he said forgive them o lord for they know not what they do when he was being crucified this is what he uttered okay so he was being crucified but he didn't get angry and there, there must have been his devotees who were praising him but he was the same and that is what this this is so take away for us is that you should not get too much flattered in praise and then don't get too depressed in criticism both are false both are false it is like a little child you know sometimes the child is sees you and is so happy and he'll run to you and he'll hug you and everything and next day the child will be crying like crazy when he sees you so do we get angry we say oh it's a child you know so this is how the jivan mukta purusha is hmm? so that is how we, we should try and be yatra pravishta vishaya prarerita nadi pravaha iva vari rashau leenanti sanmatra taya na vikriya utpadayante shayatir vimuktaha the sanyasin in whom the sense objects channeled by others are received like flowing waters into the ocean producing no change because of his absorption in existence absolute is truly liberated here the word sanyasin means a jivan mukta purusha it is not a sanyasi wearing orange clothes but it's a person who is who is liberated so he is being compared he is even in bhagavad gita bhagwan compares him to the ocean a jivan mukta purusha is always compared to the ocean why the ocean is deep it and it is apar apara means you cannot see the other shore of the ocean standing on one shore so it's very deep and it's very big because of which what happens is if see a river gets flooded have you heard of any time the ocean getting flooded ocean never gets flooded because of its infinite size like for us it is infinity only so 5 6 10 15 thousands of rivers go in the ocean level doesn't rise and suppose the rivers dry up there is no rain and there is a drought and there is not a single river that goes in do you think the ocean just sinks it doesn't that way that way this jivan mukta purusha who has now recognized himself to be that infinite pure consciousness when these sense objects are coming in what effect will it have like the ocean is there any effect on the ocean today there is uh, the river you know it rained very heavily so all the rivers are in spate so there's so much water that has come in so the ocean is nothing happens to the ocean no water came in today same 
that way, no matter if the sense objects are coming in or not. For us, when they come in, we get excited. We, we, we think that that is what is happiness. And when they are not there, then we are unhappy. That's the difference. But the Jivan Mukta Purusha, he, that's why he is compared to ocean always. Because of his absorption in existence absolute, in the infinite, right? So there cannot be any um, change or modification in the infinite. You cannot touch um, infinite. It's like this. If you have a little incense stick, and then you, if, if, if there's just this much room, and then I, I light an incense stick, the whole room will be filled with fragrance because it's in one room, but you take that same stick and you go out into open space. You think that the whole atmosphere is going to be fragrant. It can't. Why? Because of the bigness of it. It is so huge. The space is so huge outside that you take an incense stick, it doesn't affect it. Or some bad odor, something, there might be rotten eggs here if they are there or, or or a rat, if it's died under my table or something, it'll be stinking like crazy. But if I take it outside, there is no stink. It's because of the infinite nature of space. Same thing with the waters, rivers coming in, infinite nature of ocean doesn't allow it to rise or, or go down, decrease. That way, the Jivan Mukta Purusha has recognized himself to be infinity. So sense organs, they come in, they don't come in. It doesn't affect him at all. Vidnyata Brahma Tattvasya Yaya Purvam Na Sausrutihi Asti Chena Sa Vidnyata Brahma Bhavo Bahir Mukha for him who has realized the essence of Brahman, there is no reaching out for sense objects as before. If there is, then he has not realized Brahman, his senses still have an outgoing tendency. All our desires, all our outgoing tendencies, there is only one goal in our mind and that is happiness. There is, people say, no, 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 I want uh, this. I want that, I want A, I want B, I want C, I want D. People give, will give you different, 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 different things. But when you say, okay, why do you want A? Why do you want B? But no, because B gives me happiness. A gives me happiness. See, everybody will come back to that happiness part. But different objects give different people different happiness. You know, I might be happy with a big house. Somebody else is happy with a, more clothes, more shoes, more whatever. But it is all, everybody is looking for happiness. Now, this person has recognized himself to be the source of happiness. Is he going to go after these outside objects? Will he go extroverted? Will his mind become extroverted? Because he's actually constantly reveling in that uh, happiness, that bliss, that never ending bliss it is. Paramananda Prapti. That's why it's called as Parama Ananda Prapti. Parama Supreme that can never decrease at any moment. Our happiness goes up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, down. We are constantly doing it. Okay. That's why. And, and, and that's why Bhagwan says that if he has any desires his, for his own this thing, then know that he's not, he's just saying he's realized. But if he's still going after sense objects, his, he cannot be a realized master. Okay. Prachina Vas. Prachina Vasana Vegat Asau Sausarati Tiche Nasade Katva Vidnyanat Mandi Bhavati Vasana. If it is asserted that still there is attachment for sense objects because of the momentum of past vasanas, the reply is no. Note that in my book, it is in capital letters. It's no. So there's an assertion. No way. You know, no way. For the vasanas get weakened when there is realization of oneness with Brahman. So the whole idea of uh, recognizing the oneness with Brahman Immediately, our karma vasanas are burnt. There are three types of vasanas, karma vasanas, sanchita karma, agami karma, and prarabdha karma. 
These are the three types. Sanchita is that which is collected over many, many past births. And Agami are those which are going to come in the future. They are like a term deposit. So there are some term deposits which will mature in November, then some will mature in December, and then some will mature next year. That way, these karmas also have a maturity date. When that date comes, they will fructify. If it is whatever vasana is there, on that day, that person will feel like doing whatever it is. And, and then that thing, if it is a good vasana, if it is that vasana is born out of some punya, it'll, that thing will give him happiness. If the vasana is born out of some papa, it will give him sorrow. So for what it is says, if you, if, if somebody says that this liberated master, you know, because liberate, I told you there are many different types. Now, if you take Gurudev's example, yes, he wanted to set up the CIRS, you know, Chinmay International Residential School. He wanted, he wanted to set up Chinmay Vishwavidyale. He, the, the, those were his dreams. So if somebody says that, look, 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 you know, there are his vasanas. So Bhagwan says, no, 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 no. They're not for his own personal desires. They are for the good of the totality. That's why we, we cannot claim. Prarabdha karma remains. Prarabdha karma is extremely strong. Knowledge cannot destroy it. And the only way to exhaust prarabdha karma is by experiencing them. So the prarabdha karma is to the body. And therefore, we see that if the body is going to get some disease. Realize masters, all of them get diseases. Gurudev had heart disease, Raman, Bhagwan, Ramakrishna Paramans had cancer, Raman Maharshi had something else. So because they cannot avoid it. That prarabdha karma, prakarshena arabdha, means it has been very well set into motion. It is like an arrow. It will come in the same Bhagwan later on. will compare it to an arrow which has been shot out of the bow. As long, you know how the bow is, and you pull the string. So as long as you pull the string and not let the arrow out of your hands, it is in your control. But once you pull the string and release it, release that arrow, this example, remember, it will come again. Bhagwan only will tell. Then that can it has to reach its destination. And that is what Prarabdha Karma is, like that arrow which has been shot. Because how do we know that it is like that? Because birth has happened. The master realized master was born na, at some point. So obviously that prarabdha karma has begun and what has begun has to end. It has to reach its destination. So that's why he says, we, but we cannot say that, you know, his old vasanas are there and therefore now he wants this. Now he wants that. No, he would not. Like, like if a master would say, okay, I'm hungry. Can I have some food? Then, oh, look at that is his vasanas of hunger. It is not like it's not like that. He'll be thirsty. He'll be hungry. He, he, you know, he he'll need clothes, or he might have oh, you know, let's set up a school. Let's set up something like that. Hospital, this, that. So that is not his uh, personal desires. So that's why he says once he's realized, he will never have any such personal desires. Now he gives an example. Atyan at. अत्यंत कामुकस्यापी वृत्ति कुंठति मातरी तथैव ब्रह्मणी न्याते पूर्णानन्दे मनीषिणः the propensities of even a downright rake are checked in the presence of his mother so too there are no more any worldly propensities in one who has realized the knowledge of brahman the bliss absolute manishena here is jivan mukta purusha manishena word has come in bhagavad gita um, one who is a manishi manishi is a very contemplative person mana right manishi so is a very contemplative person and muni there's the same words so through contemplation through knowledge he has recognized himself so the example he gives here is that there might be a really a low life, you know, but in, when his mother is there, at least you think you he would not do anything wrong, you know, in front of his mother. That way, for one who has recognized himself to be Brahman, there cannot be any worldly propensities. There cannot be any desire to enjoy. I want to enjoy. I want to, you know, do this. No, there cannot be. This is what Bhagwan is saying here, okay? Now, 
the next portion up to here is the uh, portion about the jivan mukta lakshana characteristics so there are many many characteristics that we have now seen should go over this portion and not that every single thing we'll be able to do or we need to practice take up one or two practices and then re you know re evaluate your life based on that am i doing this or where i have not done or where i have failed or why have i not been able to do this and then work on those that is what i would say okay now prarabdha for a saint is a is a very interesting uh, topic so let's see what he has to say nidhi dhyasana shilasya bahya pratyay ikshate braviti shrutire tasya prarabdham phala darshanat he who is an adept at meditation is yet seen to have external perceptions shruti says this is prarabdha at work this can be inferred from actual results seen again i told you prarabdha karma there are three karmas sanchita prarabdha agami sanchita and agami are immediately burnt upon knowledge knowledge prarabdha karma remains the very fact that birth has happened that's why for us also prarabdha karma is in full force that's why the body goes through all the experiences that the body mind you know i i feel happy i feel sad i feel whatever the body mind and intellect is going through know that it is prarabdha karma it is my past actions that have now fructified and they have given me this disease this sorrow this joy this praise this uh, ninda uh, criticism there'll be criticism there'll be praise all these kinds of things are coming from of the karma for us because we have not recognized our our self uh, as being the pure consciousness that sanchita karma is also in effect and agami karma is also in effect so what happens is while we are acting in this world exhausting prar of the karma that karma is creating another karma it is it, it's it's like it gives babies you know and and the the way to avoid that avoid the next thing is when when we do one any karma to avoid doership that is a trick because ego is required so that the result can be experienced by somebody but if you lower the ego if you thin the ego then the new vasana is not created you have exhausted the previous vasana but a new vasana is not created when, because it is my vasana that i have to teach okay it is my vasana it is my prarabdha example i am giving you now while speaking while teaching if i go go on have harboring this thought ah i am the one that see how good i am see everybody like this 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 this, this. those type of thoughts are now creating more vasanas for me but if i say that i'm doing this as a service i have offered it as a service to my lord, to the lord or to my guru or somebody then i'm not taking doership of it and then that way a new vasana is not being created okay now here nidhi dhyasana shilasya so nidhi dhyasana shil means he has he has become an expert in nidhi nidhi dhyasana is meditation if he has become an expert in meditation he he, he is he has realized himself saint it is prarabdha for a saint right so outside there will be he will come out of meditation at some point and he will act in the normal world as he'll take a shower he will eat when he's hungry he will sleep when he's um, this thing and this this all the external perceptions that other people see him do right so he's eating he's drink what other people see that is prarabdha at work now what happens is the realized master knows this very well and that's why they do not get upset when something happens to the body but we do they say it is my body's prarabdha i gave you the example of tapon maharaj who had malaria for 44 days he said yeah it's the prarabdha of my body that body has to go through it let it go through it why do i need medication that is what is his vision his vision but then other people see it so in this case there was malaria but some other master might be there he might be traveling in first class 
Gurudev was traveling in, by air later on. Guruji, everybody. Business class. So say, oh, see, he's traveling in business. That's his prarabdha. This is prarabdha. Okay. So this is Braviti Shruti Reta. Bra Braviti Shruti saying this. That it is all whatever external perceptions are happening with him. Whatever external activities that he is doing, it is his prarabdha. And he, he very well knows that. See, when they are supposed, they seem to be enjoying and all that, then people, you know, will say something. But if the person is suffering, if the Jivan the person is suffering and he's suffering quietly, he will never complain. He knows, he knows this is the prarabdha of my body. I have to go through this that way. So he says, this is prarabdha at work. And, and this is inferred from the result, inferred. See, the prarabdha karma is inferred because I told you this many times. Birth has happened now. That is the first indication that there is some prarabdha that remains. Even for Bhishma Pitama, see, if you know the story, their mother Ganga, she's seven of her children. She went and sunk them in the river Ganges, right? And this one he questioned, her husband questioned her. And she said, oh, 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 his prarabdha remains. Because now I can't, that's what she released them. They were all under a curse. And they took birth. They said, oh God, you know, and they only had told her, we'll take birth and you just kill us immediately so that we are released. But Bhishma Pitama remained. So he had to go through his prarabdha. That is why. So that's why birth, when it happens, you know that there is prarabdha. Okay. Sukha dhyanubhavo yavat tavat prarabdha mishate Follow the yakriya purvo nishkriyo nahi kutra chita. As long as there is the experience of happiness, etc., the work of prarabdha is seen to persist. Every result is seen to have a preceding action. There can be no result independent of action. Very important. Whatever you're getting today in your life is a result, it is an effect. There cannot be an effect without a cause. Okay. There cannot be any result without a previous action. Now, we may think, I have not done anything in this life to deserve this. But the part is what I've done in my past lives. That part is unknown. That's why result of every karma. That's why Raman Maharshi has said, Kartur Karturadnyaya prapyate phalam. By the order of the creator. What is the order of the creator? Creator is looking at what you have done in the past and what you have done in the present. What we do, I will look only at the thing that I've done in the present. I studied so hard and I wrote this exam. Why did I not pass or why did I not get a first class? Yes, but there is something in your past which you don't know. And Ishwara knows. So that result, you may think you did you wrote a paper where you should have gotten 100% marks, but you only got 70% or 50%. Then know that there is something from my past impediment is there, which is preventing my result 100% marks to come. So this is when, when you experience Sukha, 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 Adya, Sukha Adi. So there is Sukha, but that includes Dukha also. So sometimes there is joy, sometimes there is sorrow also. You must, the work of prarabdha is seen to persist. You must know that it is prarabdha. And if that sukha has come, there is something in the past that you have done to deserve it. If the dukkha has come, you only have done something. That's why there is no blame game. We, little even thing happens. You, I was talking on the phone to some friend and then she said to me, oh, you were talking, now my dal got burnt. Immediately she pushed she phoned. Who asked you to, you know, keep that dal there? Then she said, "You." I said, okay, then bye. I just put the phone down. Simple, simple things. Immediately we find somebody else to blame. It's your inadvertence. You should have switched the range off or this thing, right? But immediately, so oh, because of your talking, the my dal got burnt. But as spiritual seekers, na, we must know that. Both ways I'm telling you, if you tomorrow win a lottery, you need not give credit to anybody else. You need not, honestly, this is the, this 
This is the truth. You have done something in the past to win that lottery. So you might say, oh, my friend suggested that I go to this store and buy. That's why she, because of her, I got it. You can't get anything because of somebody else did it. Whatever they did, they will get. Whatever you did, you will get. So no blame, no credit. Everything you have to take responsibility. I did this. That's why I got this. So this is what he's saying. Follow the kriya purva. Follow, follow udaya. Means when the result comes, it is dependent on the purva kriya. Before some action you have done, therefore that action has come. Nish kriyo nahi kutra chita. Never, never there can be a result without something, some cause. Effect, you can't just, this is what the, this is where the Buddhist, uh, they say that there was nothing and from that nothing this world came. Are how that world will come from nothing? Something has to be there. Okay. So this is with regard to action, karma, result that, that we get. Every experience, every situation that we face, every person that comes into our life is our prarabdha. Nothing happens by coincidence. That's a very important point in Vedanta. We should remember, oh, I suddenly met you and now I'm so happy. Nothing. It's nothing like that. It was meant for you to meet this person. And then that person was supposed to give you happiness or that person was supposed to give you sadness and you got it. And it's all predetermined. There is nothing that happens by coincidence in our life. Nobody's life. There's no coincidences in life. It's all pre-planned. Our own, we have only charted our own life in previous births. That's why this life, we have to be careful so that we don't, you know, create more. Aham Brahmeti Vidyanat Kalpakoti Shatarjitam Sanchitam Vilayam Yati Prabodat Swapna Karmavata. I am Brahman. With this realization, the actions of a hundred crore cycles come to naught. Hundred crore cycles. Like the actions in the dream on waking up. Sanchita karma, I told you. Sanchita karma that we have done for God knows how many. Thousands and thousands and thousands of births, we have done this actions which have given rise to Sanchita Karma. Immediately upon realization of I am Brahman, every last bit, every wee bit of Sanchita Karma will be exhausted. How, how, like when you wake up from your dream, the, you maybe murdered somebody. Are you going to wake up and say, oh, now I better go and confess that I murdered somebody? It's gone. The minute you wake up from the dream, whatever happened, or you may have won a lottery, or you may have done something wrong, or somebody else may have you know, done something wrong to you. Are you going to go say, hey, you insulted me in my dream? You came and you insulted me. Only Raja Harishchandra was the great one. When he gave his kingdom in the dream, he woke up and the rishi came and he said, you gave me your kingdom. Give it to me now. And that is only, that is rare. Okay. That, that, that's, he was testing him. But this is the example Bhagwan is giving here. Sanchitam vilayam yati. Vilayam uh, dissolved. Completely what sanchitam? Sanchita karma is dissolved. Prabhoda swapna karma. Prabhoda is waking up. When I wake up, then that swapna karma means karma done in my dream. Doesn't that just go away? Do I worry about it? Do I get excited about it? Whether I've won a lottery, whether I've created a crime, I have no worries. I have no happiness. That way, when the person wakes up to the fourth state, this is what it is, the Turiya, because what is Turiya? Is recogni recognition between oneness of Jiva Brahma. Then all the actions get burnt away. Okay? Now, now, again, uh, uh, the dream example. That's why I've always told you that the rishis, this waking dream and deep sleep states are extremely important in understanding Vedanta. Because Vedanta is not dependent on any kind of external apparatus. You know, in science, we used to physics, we went to the lab and we did experiments, right? We cannot do an exp any experiment like that to recognize Brahman. All we have is our own body, mind, and intellect. And all the rishis have done is examined our own experiences. There's nothing extra. That's why even I've given you the example of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj many, many times. He could not read. 
he was not, there was no Vivek Charamani that he studied, that we are studying so much. <laughs> it is not for realization, books are not required. Books are only required to guide us how to, how to go in that direction, why to go in that direction. All this for all that we need these books. But to, for actual realization, you don't need anything, only your own equipment. And therefore, they studied these three states. And they realized that there is something beyond these three states. That so, but to, they did it on their own. Now we are doing it with their help because now they wrote down their experiences. Now we are reading them. That's why we need to read all this. Yat kritam swapna velayam punyam va papa papa mulbanam supto tittasya kintatsya swargaya narakaya va. Can the meritorious acts or sinful deeds that a man has imagined during in a dream take him to heaven or hell when he has awakened? The same thing. I win a lottery in my dream. I kill somebody in my dream. Once I wake up, are the police going to come and catch me for having killed somebody in my dream? Am I going to go to the store and cash in the check in my lottery ticket? Am I going to do anything? So there is neither pop nor punya in whatever that you have done in the dream once you wake up. While dreaming, you think it is very real. When you are in that dream state, that dream that you are seeing appears extremely real. That Everybody would have experienced that. That's why it is your own experience. That's why you don't need a book to tell you that. You don't need me to tell you. Don't, haven't you experienced fear? I have. I have experienced fear. I've experienced joy. I've, I've experienced like tears and crying, everything. All these experiences, that's why Swami Vidyaranya, he, he says that Swapna and Jagrata, he says in Panchadashi, this is same. Why? Whatever emotions you have in the waking state, which you think is very real. Right? Now, waking state is very real. Dream state is illusion. That is our common. Think about it now, he says. In the waking state, you have happiness, you have sorrow, you have jealousy, you have anger. Whatever emotions that your mind is going through in the waking state, some, not that every single dream you will go through all the, but even in our waking state, every day we don't go through all the emotions, do we? But some days we are very happy. Some days we feel low. Some days we feel jealous. Something happens. Some days we are ang angry. It's not like every single minute of the day we are emoting all these emotions. That way, in dream, he says, you are emoting the exact same emotions. This is, this is Swami Vidyatna's argument. So why is waking real and dream illusion, he says? It's not. It's the same. It's the same. That's why the Dhyarita says that upon waking up, as, just as the dream becomes an illusion, Therefore, waking and dream states are the same. They have equal reality, actually. But we don't understand that. We think that this is very, very real, waking state. is extremely real. Once we wake up to the fourth state, we'll come to know this whole thing is an illusion as well. Okay? Swama Sangha Mudasinam Paridnyaya Nabhoyatha being unattached and indifferent like sky, one who is realized is never concerned in the least about actions yet to be performed. So <laughs> the space example also is very important. And, and I told you, you take an incense stick out or you take a dead rat out dead in, in, the, in your home. He may be dead for a month and his whole house is stinking. The minute you take it out in the open, there will be no stink. There will be no fragrance. This, or you spit. Suppose you spit. You think space is becoming dirty because of the spit? No. Space is not becoming. Or you vomit. Or there's some bloodshed. It's nothing. Space is not becoming red. Space is not becoming dirty because of the vomit. Space is not becoming anything is not, nothing is happening to Nabho Yatha, Nabha sky, sky space. So that way, he, the one who is, this, he's, he's unaffected, he's, he doesn't worry about the future. We have seen this in chapter three, Karma Yoga. 
how our karmas to be performed without worries of the past and anxieties for the future what is the anxiety for the future will i get this result will i get this result will i get this result that is the anxiety for the future worry about the past is oh man last time i did it it didn't work last time i did it it didn't work so now that worry is there you're bringing both these things into the present and whatever in present that you were going to do that action that action is also not coming out correctly now why because things from the past and from the future are affecting your mind but with him this is he he he, he never worries because he knows it is prarabdha karma it it will happen things are happening that, that is the gunati the purusha that the, the realized master knows that everything that is happening is because of the play of the gunas guna guneshu vartantu it's because of the interaction of the gunas and i don't do anything so why we get worried you know because i think i'm doing i have to do this tomorrow now i have like oh my god i'm really tight huh? tomorrow this 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 have to do it's not like that for him for him for us it is it is like that therefore he says that just as the uh, sky the space remains unattached unaffected by whatever is happening he remains unaffected okay this is the whole essence of this uh, this thing. ोगेन सुरागंधेन लिप्यते तथात्मोपाधियोगेन तद्धर्मैर्न लिप्यते द स्काय बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स कॉन्टैक्ट विद जार इज नॉट एफेक्टेड बाय द स्मेल ऑफ द लिकर इन एट सेम एक्साम्पल so to the atman is not affected by the properties the conditionings because of its contact with them so in the in the in the jar is the smell of the, the same you take the incense stick or you dead rat you take it into the sky into the space is it affecting space same way you put liquor into the bottle or you put some perfume in the bottle the bottle itself is not absorbing it that's what he says smell of liquor the atman is not affected by whatever is happening outside that's why the jivan mukta purusha this is prarabdha of a saint so this jivan mukta purusha who is now completely identified with atman he he is with atman he is not with body mind and intellect therefore whatever is happening doesn't affect him we are with body mind and intellect with means we are identified with body mind and intellect so whatever happens to the body whatever happens to the mind is affecting us so we can therefore we are we are told to stand as a witness to whatever is happening stand as a witness to whatever is happening to the body whatever is being said to the mind hurtful things are being said to the mind or joyful things may be said to the mind too you stay as a witness witness is always unaffected by whatever is said or done and that is what he is but with him it is natural it comes naturally to him because he has completely identified with the pure consciousness with us it will not come naturally but we need to remind ourselves that no 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 i must not get affected by all this i am that pure consciousness i must not get affected okay this is how our thinking should be ज्ञानो दयापुरारब्धम कर्म ज्ञान नश्यति अद्वा स्वफल स्वफल लक्ष्य उद्देश्योत्सृष्ट बाणवत that work which was performed before the dawn of knowledge and because of which this body is conjured up is not destroyed by self knowledge without yielding its fruits just like an arrow shot at an object prarabdha karma how do we know this is prarabdha karma that work which was performed before the dawn of not see the birth has taken place this jivan mukta purusha he he took birth na which indicates that there is prarabdha karma okay which also indicates that there was sanchita karma and there is agami karma that also the birth is the indication of all three but now at the dawn of knowledge those two karmas get burnt away immediately immediately but prarabdha karma continues so self without so this prarabdha karma cannot be exhausted without yielding its fruits that is what it is so if that prarabdha karma is saying that this body is going to get diseased it is going it has to go through that disease to exhaust that prarabdha karma knowledge alone cannot destroy prarabdha karma that is what it is just like an arrow shot at an object when the arrow is released once it is released from the bow how do we know the arrow is released because birth has taken place 
Okay, we'll stop here today. Uh, for, so we'll go on with 4.52 next time. Uh, there is a class next uh, Friday because the uh, Calgary Yadne is finishing on the 10th. So 11th, there will be a class, okay? But Monday, there is no class because you guys have got, uh, Calgary has got Yadne. All right, so uh, Sunday, there is a class. Uh, this Sunday, there is a class. Last Sunday, we had uh, AG, uh, our AGM, yeah, um, Vancouver AGM. So there was no class. But this Sunday, 9.15, there'll be a class. We will continue with Chapter 4. And uh, we will meet uh, next Friday. Okay. Friday is uh, uh, mem uh, Memorial Day. Are we having a holiday on that day? Remembrance Day, you mean? Remembrance Day. Uh, Zoom classes, I don't give holidays and I'm here. So as it is October 31st, Halloween holiday happened, then Diwali holiday, we have to proceed, you know? Otherwise, we'll be doing this only for the another five years. No, 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 no. So um, next Friday, there is class. Uh, we will proceed. I don't think anybody, who, if, if you get tapes, so whoever misses can watch the YouTube. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. You're welcome. Hari Om. Om Swasti Prajabhyav Paripale Yantam Nyayena Margena Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmanebhya Shubhamastu Nityam Loka Samastha Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithivisasya Shalini Desho Yamcho Varaita Brahmana Santu Nirbhayaha Om Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Makash Dukhabhag Bhavet Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnam Adaf Purnam Idam Purna Purnam Adachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Avashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om